Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, another Q&A, a question and answer, inshallah, from uh, my Love Note seminar that was held recently here in Perth. Um, in Surah An-Nur, ayah number 26, it says, Unclean women or corrupt women are for unclean or corrupt men, and pure women are for pure men. In what context is this purity? For instance, if a man has committed zina years ago and he has repented and changed his ways and he proposes to a girl who hasn't done any major sins, does that mean she will become unpure because of his sins? Can you please explain the context of this ayah? Uh, please note that the male was honest and upfront about this before uh, proposing. Uh, look, it's not about the proposal. Let's uh, clarify this ayah. Uh, this ayah has been misunderstood and it's been mistranslated in different contexts um, and in many different translations, subhanAllah. Uh, the ayah really simply states, and this is after Allah discusses the, the hadithat al-ifq, after people had accused Aisha radiallahu anha falsely uh, and Allah has declared her uh, purity, then Allah says, Al-Khabithatu lil khabithin those evil words that were spoken in this context about Aisha and other people who are falsely accused of zina, they should only be used with those whose zina has been done on, uh, by them. And good words should be used for good people, like Aisha radiallahu anha. And therefore, it's not khabithat as in corrupt women, it's khabithat as in evil words, evil words of slander, evil words of accusation. Evil words and titles like Zani, an adulterer or an adulteress, should only be used about a person who is actually an adulterer and adulteress, lil khabithin, to those who are actually khabithin. Wal khabithuna lil khabithat. And those who are actually corrupt, yes, they are the only ones you should use those words about. Wal tayyibatu lil tayyibin. And therefore, use good words to discuss and to speak about those who are of a good uh, akhlaq and good uh, nature and good. Uh, piety and righteousness in their deeds. And therefore, you see this at the end of that ayah, Allah says, Allah has set clear uh, and has defended those who were innocent from these uh, evil words, from the words. And therefore, this ayah, the khabithat in it, it's not women and men, it's the khabithat are the bad words that are used about good people um, uh, when it should not have been used in the first place. Uh, may Allah give us enlightenment, inshaAllah. I will add to this question about another verse in Surah An-Nur, which is a little bit ahead of it, where Allah says, uh, You know, uh, uh, an adulteress is not to betray, is not to have nikah, except with a person who is an adulterer or a person who is a zani, uh, an, uh, 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 an idolater. And uh, an idolater and um, uh, a zani, a person who is an adulteress or an adulterer, they should only marry someone of like kind or someone who has no faith. Uh, this ayah also has been mistranslated and misunderstood, and it's important to clarify it. If you look in the books of Tafsir al Qurtubi ibn Kathir and al Tabari, you'll see that there's many awjah, many different statements that have made in it. And I'm just going to share uh, the, the background of the ayah and some of the statements of some of the senior imams and what is seen to be the most correct in its understanding. First, the context of the ayah. Uh, this ayah was revealed at a time where there were many poor male Sahaba, many men were very poor. They had made migration, they lost everything, they were homeless. So they would go out in the day and work and then they would come and they would have to stay and sleep in the masjid. They had no home and they were living on the kindness of others if they couldn't earn enough to, uh, to pay for their way. And there were women in Medina who were adulterers and they were professional prostitutes. Uh, Umm Mahdul, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and others. And they're named, you know, we know their names in the books of Hadith. And some of the Sahaba, they said, well, why don't we marry them? And that way we have a place to stay and we have a place to live. And, and the condition that these women made were that if you marry me, you can't stop me from doing this job. I'm going to continue to be a prostitute and an adulteress. Azzakum Allah, may Allah protect our families, Ya Rabb. So they came and asked the Prophet Sallallahu and that I will feed you, I will continue to feed you, but I would like to have a husband. So the Prophet ﷺ was approached and Allah revealed these verses. This is according to the hadith in Abi Dawood and At-Tirmidhi and others. Bi-Isnadim, uh, in accordance to their chains. So that's the context. So Allah then said, no, no, no. Adulteresses should not be taken in wedlock in that sense. 
uh, unless they're going to give that up. Because if they are, then you are going to be azani likewise. It's like you're a partner in that crime. So that's the context. It's not that someone has committed, may Allah forgive us, a major mistake in their life, and then they repent to Allah, and now they're whole and complete with Allah, and they want to move on with their life, they want to have a good start, they want to have a good life, that we say, say no, you got to marry someone who's engaged in that kind of activity. That is not the context that is found in the Qur'an. Wallahu uh, ta'ala a'la wa a'lam. There's so much more that could be said, and it's not something that this platform gives the time in these five minutes to discuss it. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us insight and enlightenment. So to the person asking this question, uh, uh, it is does not make the person that one marries impure uh, just because we had that sin. And if a person has repented to Allah, their sin is forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them closure and humility and hide them and their shame from others. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.